This is the second episode of my trip to Paris. France, one of the most influential countries in the world. With a population of more than 65 million, its presence reaches from Western Europe to overseas countries and territories. The national holiday is commemorated every July 14th, the anniversary of the storming of the Bastille in 1789. Back then, the Bastille prison was the symbol of absolute monarchy. We can see Le Génie de la Liberté on top of the Colonne de Juillet. Marianne, a symbol of the French Republic, can be found all over Paris in places like the Place de la République and the Place de la Nation. She stands for liberty, equality, fraternity and reason. The main governmental buildings and authorities are located in Paris. On the east of the Champs-Élysées, we can find the French president's official residence, the Élysée Palace. The National Assembly meets in the Palais Bourbon. Close to the Latin Quarter lie the Luxembourg Gardens. They contain hundreds of statues, monuments, and fountains. They are currently owned by the French Senate, the upper chamber of the French Parliament. Some of the buildings that pay respect to the most prominent figures of French history are located in Paris. Like the Pantheon, where the greatest writers, scientists, generals, churchmen and politicians rest. Going westward, we find the Alexander III Bridge where we can see some marvelous nymphs statues. Across the bridge we can see the Hotel des Invalides, the place where the leading military figures rest. including Napoleon's tomb. It contains several museums and monuments related to France's military history, from antiquity to the 20th century. Paris is also home to one of Europe's largest business districts, La Défense. La Grande Arc is the modern version of the Arc de Triomphe. Some of the tallest buildings in Paris are located in this area.
historically, Paris has also been one of the main hosts of football events. Located in the common of Colombe, on the northwest of the city, lies the Stade Yves du Manoir, a multi-sport stadium named after the French rugby legend. It has hosted numerous French Cup finals, the Summer Olympic Games of 1924, and of course, it was the main venue of the FIFA World Cup 1938, when it had a capacity of over 60,000. In this stadium, Italy won their second FIFA World Cup after beating Hungary by 42. Two goals from Gino Colausi and two others from Silvio Viola gave the victory to the team led by Vittorio Bozzi. Legends like Pelé have played in this stadium, and it's home to one of the oldest clubs in French football history, Le Racine Club de France Football. Located in the common of saint ouen sur seine lies the Stade Bauer. Also known as Le Stade de Paris, it's the home of Red Star FC. It hosted several football matches during the 1924 Olympic Games. The stadium is currently being renovated for the 2024 Olympic Games.
Finally, going northwards, we find one of the most important stadiums in my life, Le Stade de France. Located in the Commune of Saint-Denis, with a capacity of 80,000, it is the country's largest stadium. It has hosted many important events, like the 1998 FIFA World Cup, 2016 Euro, and two Champions League finals. It will also be the main venue for the next Summer Olympic Games in 2024 and the next Champions League final in May 2022. The FIFA World Cup 1998 was the third one I watched and it was one of my favorite ones. With many great players like Ronaldo, Rivaldo, David Beckham, Batistuta, Zinedine Zidane, the Lauder brothers, Lauer Schuker, Patrick Kluivert, and Dennis Bergen, and many others played in this edition. The Stade de France hosted five group stage matches, including the opening match between Brazil and Scotland, and several knockout stage matches, the victory of Denmark against Nigeria, the nil-nil between France and Italy, where Luigi Di Biagio missed the final penalty, the semi-finals between France and Croatia with that double from uh, Lilian Thuram, and of course, the big match, the final, Brazil against uh, France. It was definitely one of the most remembered matches of Zidane's prolific career. The atmosphere surrounding that match was very strange. On Brazilian TV, they were very anxious because they didn't know if uh, Ronaldo was going to play the final, and they said that Edmundo was going to play it. I didn't feel that Brazil was actually that focused on the match, and it was over the half time. I will always remember that final goal by Emmanuel Petit and Didier Deschamps lifting the cup. It was a well-deserved victory. In the year 2016, another major event, France played most of our matches in this stadium, including the opening match with that uh, last-minute goal from uh, Payet against a uh, very combative Romanian team, uh, the quarter-finals against Iceland, the big uh, surprise of the tournament, and the final against Portugal. France was definitely the favorite, maybe the best in the tournament, with great performances from uh, Pismann, uh, Giroud, Joris, uh, Pogba. But Portugal had an amazing team, obviously led by Cristiano Ronaldo, who had to leave the match very early because of an injury. Uh, they defended really well, Drew Patricia had an amazing performance. I think France was better in the first 90 minutes, but in the extra time, Portugal gained confidence. So the unexpected hero, Eder, came from the bench to give uh, Portugal their first uh, uh, major title. Le Stade de France also hosted the final of the FIFA Confederations Cup in 2003, which will be sadly remembered by the death of Marc Bibian Foy in the semi finals at Stade Gerland in Lyon. France won with a golden goal scored by Thierry Henry. The UEFA Champions League 2000 was the first one played by two teams from the same country. Valencia had an amazing team, uh, probably the best in their history, with great players like Mendieta, Farinos, El Kili González, Miguel Ángel Angulo, El Piojo López, trained by uh, Hector Cooper. But Real Madrid know uh, how to play these games. Uh, they didn't have a very good season overall, but uh, a final is a different thing. And they were up to the task. With great players like Fernando Morientes, who scored the first goal, Stephen Manaman and that volley, for the second goal, and some other ones like Michel Salgado, Fernando Redondo, Ivan Campo, Casillas, uh, Roberto Carlos. I still remember all the people in the crowd standing while Raul was running with the ball in the tribune Canizares and then scoring the third goal uh, to give uh, Real Madrid their eighth uh, Champions League. The 2006 UEFA Champions League final. Barcelona had to wait uh, 12 years uh, to reach the final and a 14 to win it after a Wembley 1992. Frank Rijkaard led the team to the top again. Ronaldinho was in his prime, uh, surrounded by uh, great players like Puyol, Eto'o, Julie, Deco, Rafael Marquez, Van Bronhoff, Edmilson, Van Mommel, Iniesta, Xavi and Lionel Messi, even though these last two didn't play in final. On the other hand, Arsenal had an amazing team led by Arsene Wenger. After so many years trying to reach the final, they finally did. With great players like Henri, Seth Fabregas, Lumer, Robert Pire, Colo Touré, Emmanuel Boé, Sol Campbell, who scored the first goal in the match, and James Lehmann, who was sent off. That was a very important moment in the match. I think it was one of the best performances of Victor Valdez in Barcelona. He really saved the team. 
uh, the substitutes made the difference. Uh, this time was uh, Giuliano Belletti who scored uh, his only goal with Barcelona and the most important one. Having missed uh, the FIFA World Cups from 1990 1994, uh, the first memories I have from France come from the Euro Cup in uh, 1996, uh, where they reached uh, the semi-finals. It was uh, the beginning of a great era that ended with the victory in the FIFA World Cup 1998 and Euro uh, 2000. Some of my favorite French players come from that uh, time, like uh, Lilian Durand, Zinedine Zidane, uh, Didier Deschamps, uh, Marcel Desailly, uh, Thierry Henry, uh, David Trezeguet. France has always been uh, the cradle of many talented players, uh, this new generation added a second uh, FIFA World Cup when in Russia in 2018. I would say that my top uh, three French players of all time are uh, Zinedine Zidane, uh, Thierry Henry uh, and Kylian Mbappé. Now let's enjoy the match between France and Kazakhstan at Parc de France.
Our last stop, the beautiful Basilica of Sacré-Cœur. Located at the top of the hill in the Montmartre neighborhood, it is one of the most visited landmarks in Paris. Visitors can enjoy breathtaking panoramic views of the city. The church is dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Night falls, we approach the end of our trip, an unforgettable journey in one of the most beautiful cities in the world, Paris. Hi, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen the first part of my trip to Paris, click right here. See you next time.